we're good anytime. September 1939. I was a young lad walking through the beaten pass of Auschwitz when all of a sudden the attack alarm sounded. I didn't know where to run, I didn't know where to hide, but all I knew was I was going to die. When all of a sudden the glowing glimpse of Naomi Giverson came out of my peripheral vision from my right eye and I felt as if the war had never started. Thank you, Naomi. September 3rd. Basketball tryouts. I've been trying out all summer. I've been going to all the camps. I was talking to all the coaches. Dribble, dribble, dribble. Hard and wait. Let's go. Make it work. I know you're going to make the team. September 3rd. Tryouts actually came. I went to go try out. But guess what? I didn't make it. I was walking down the halls, had my basketball that I actually purchased that summer. I was just walking down, spinning it around my finger a couple times. Kept on walking down and then <clears throat> I saw Naomi. She said, you look upset. And I said, well, you know what? I thought I was gonna make basketball team and I didn't. I didn't make it. She said, it's okay, it's okay. Next year, try out. Practice this summer, go out, try it again. And you'll make it. <laughs> Guess what? I, I actually practiced that summer. The next year I came back and I made the team. Thank you, Naomi. I was a single father. My wife died a few years ago. And I said to my son, Jimmy, why don't we go for a bike ride down the street? So me and Jimmy set out on our newly bought bikes from Canadian Tire. And we went down Glen Clearing. Jimmy, being the Speedy young lad that he is got to the end of Goon Karen for it first and turned the corner. Me being the slow father that I had been, nursing him for nine years on my own, gaining weight, being a stay-at-home father, I couldn't catch up to Jimmy. When I turned that corner, Jimmy wasn't there. I waited for a few minutes. And then, out of nowhere, the Giverson family came around the corner. And I thought to myself, you know, if Jimmy had a ran into Naomi Giverson, she would have sent him in the right path. Three days later, Jimmy came home. Thank you, Naomi. February 14th, Valentine's Day. I bought a beautiful bouquet of roses for my girlfriend. I brought them to her house. I was so excited. She loved roses. The roses were as, they were, they were as red as the handle of the H&M bags. As red as the tomato. They were beautiful. So I brought them. I brought them to her house, all excited. Here you go, Janice. Here's the flowers. Her mom answered. Janice wasn't there. So guess where she was? She was at Bob's. She was at Billy's. Who are all these guys? She was my girl. My girlfriend. I went upstairs of her home. I went and checked on her bed. Are you in there? I used to joke with her. Are you in there? Are you in there, Janice? Are you in there? She wasn't in there. So I left her home. I walked down the street. Started walking on, had the roses by my hand. Who do I see? Naomi. It's pretty sad. You know, here I was thinking, Janice and I can't break up, we can't. But Naomi said, those are some beautiful roses. They look so nice on that beautiful island that you have in your home. Let me go get a vase at my house. I'll go put them, I'll bring them to you. I'll bring them to you, Emily. I'll bring the 12 roses to you, Emily. <laughs> and she did. And I was so happy! <laughs> Thank you, Naomi! October 2001, a single mother, my name, Sue. I was <laughs> working at Ikea. <laughs> Betty Sue, my manager, kind of ironic that we have the same name, came running in. At first I thought she was going, just going to be like, Oh, Sue, it's a beautiful day, how are you? Want to go get coffee or maybe talk about how our sons had lost their provincial baseball game? But no. Betty Sue said, I am sorry, Sue, but Ikea's budget just can't handle you anymore. We have to let you go. I walked to that office, drowning in my tears and sorrow. And I just, I felt like the world was nothing anymore. When out of the left wing elevator, Naomi came sprinting out and said, Sue, you stop right there. Everything will be okay. God bless Naomi that day because I was slipping into clinical depression so quickly that I didn't know when my last hours would have been. Thank you, Naomi. December 25th, BC. Naomi born. <clears throat> Jesus. Jesus, crap. June 4th, 
1993, Naomi Gobson was born, yeah she was now. Everybody was yeah. singing on the streets for the love of Naomi Gobson. You know, you know, Naomi it's her birthday, she's gonna have them too. She's not Naomi getting further, she's gonna have a couple drinks, yes she is. Tom C. Mikey, Matthew, sir. Have the cake, have the cake, have the cake, John brought the bag. Oh, the bag, have the cake. The bag at the cake. <laughs> the cake bag. I'm having one more thing. What? <laughs> I'm so sorry. The end. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Smile, pretty John.